The U.S. sled hockey program has the deepest rosters out of anywhere. Anytime we play in a game, we're never taking it easy. We take every game just as seriously. We've never had women from the women's national team playing in a game together. This game is going to be fast-paced, hard-hitting. We have all the scores. Hanger Live! Hanger Live! Hanger Live! Hanger Live! Are you ready? Are you ready to see the best sled hockey players in the world battle out on the ice today? Are you ready? You're going to have the best players in the world. I'm playing on Team White, and I am a goaltender. I'm captain for Team Blue. I'm on Team Blue, so we're going to win. I am playing for Team White. Team Y is going to win because we have the courage, we have the confidence, and we are going to dominate. We're going to outskate them, we're going to outphysical them, and we're going to bury the Fox Ball. From the Comerica Center here in Frisco, Texas, we want to welcome you to the first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic presented by Hangar and USA Hockey Hangar a leading provider of orthotic and prosthetic care. Alongside one of the sled hockey legends in international competition, Taylor Lipset, Jared Sandler, happy to be with you. And Taylor, really looking forward to what we're about to see on the ice tonight. Yeah, for the first time ever, we've got Team USA versus Team USA, and these are the best teams in the world and have been for a long time. We heard some of the players talk about uh, the success of USA Hockey, that they are, as you mentioned, the best players in the world, and that's not false confidence. This is the most decorated country when it comes to the men's and women's side of things with sled hockey. Hands down, the men's Paralympic team have won four gold medals in a row and five of the last six Paralympic gold medals, and the women's team just brought home the first International Paralympic Committee Women's World Cup gold medal in convincing fashion, so both these teams are at the top of their game, and they're going to put it on display here tonight. we got a great crowd on hand. I want to thank everyone for being with us tonight. Big round of applause. We got more than a thousand people here at the Comerica Center. Sponsors, vendors, customers, hangar employees all in town for the Hangar Live Conference, which brings leaders in the orthotic and prosthetic patient care industry together for education and collaboration. And uh, we welcome everyone who is tuning in on YouTube as well to join us for this evening's game. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we got going on here tonight, Taylor. First, the starting lineup for the blue team. Yeah, blue team led by uh, Jack Wallace on defense and Declan Farmer, who is hands down the best player in the world and probably uh, most want to argue the, the best player to ever play the game of sled hockey. And how about the white team? White team is led by team pa or U.S. Paralympic uh, captain Josh Pauls, four-time Paralympic gold medalist, and he'll have his team ready to go. All right, we got a broadcast team of three. Two members of the broadcast team have won gold medals. I'm not one of them. We've got Taylor, who's got his share, and how about Mallory Wegeman? She is a gold medalist in the pool, and she is down on the rink, ready to join us. Thanks so much, Jared. I am down here with Declan Farmer, three-time Paralympic gold medalist for Team USA. But tonight, he is the captain of the blue team. So Declan, it's going to be a matchup of men, you guys. Tell us what you think it's going to be. Well, uh, you know, these two teams have been going at it all week in this training camp that, you know, Hanger put on for us. And I think uh, it's just going to be even more electric when we have all these fans in the building. You know, we've, we've really had two close games. We tied last night, and this is a rubber match tonight. I love it. Now, we have to assume that sled hockey might be new for not only some of our viewers, but our attendees. So give us a quick rundown on the sled itself. Yeah, we have, uh, we have Brody Roybal's sled here, so I'll try to take care of it. Um, this, is, uh, this is what it looks like. This is what we call the frame here. Uh, just kind of holds everything together. The bucket up top with the red, white, and blue uh, design is custom molded to us, you know, with uh, guys coming from so many different backgrounds, different disabilities, it's really important to have a good custom fit, just like with any prosthetic or orthotic. Um, then we have the blades on the bottom. Uh, a lot of people new to the sport think there's only one blade, but there's actually two. Um, you know, they're pretty close together. Brody actually has them further apart than most guys on the team. Uh, but yeah, those are the main components, and then of course, the sticks here, uh, got the picks on the bottom to push ourselves across the ice, the, the blades on the top. So, yeah, that's it. Well, and what also is unique is it's the men's national team. 
we have the development team, and we have women. So we have a big contingency here tonight on these two teams. You were once the young buck, but now you're, you're getting older, three games in. What is it like to be a leader on the team and see this type of group come together for a game like this? Well, it's really amazing. When I first got on the team, I was, I was pretty young, but the, you know, the sport has gone so far uh, since then. I think you know, trying to make the team, uh, if, if I was a 15-year-old now, I'd have no chance. These young guys are too good now, and uh, you know, the women here, it's, it's really cool to you know, all be in the same environment, training together, pushing each other, and it's, it's, it's really you know, a great sign for the sport. Well, I don't know about you all, but I cannot wait for the game tonight. Thank you so much, Declan, and back to you, Jared. Thanks so much, Mallory, and we're excited too. Let's get to some of the basics, though, and take a look at the rules for tonight's game. Uh, Taylor, what should people know about this evening's contest? Yeah, the most important thing is sled hockey is hockey. It's fast-paced, it's physical, it's full contact. Uh, a couple of things to point out. We play 15-minute periods as opposed to 20 minutes like you might see in the NHL. And we've got one additional rule that stand-up hockey doesn't have, and it's called T-boning, which is where you, you hit a player perpendicular with the front of your sled. That's a two-minute penalty, so not allowed. But other than that, that's the only difference is it's, it's the game of hockey and the players... Uh, Play it at a very high level. If you get upset at me, don't T-bone me tonight, all right? No, Is that I deal? promise. All right, we're excited to bring in Pete Stoy, the president and COO of Hangar Pete. Thanks so much for being with us tonight and being part of this great event. Got, got a round of applause yeah. here. That's, you don't have to be shy. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be here. It's fantastic. Is this your first sled hockey game? It is my first sled hockey game live. I've seen a lot of footage. Obviously, I've seen the team from the uh, Beijing Paralympics, but... The first time seeing it, you know, in the in the rink with the crowd like this, I'm thrilled. The, the entire the entire hangar team is thrilled to be here. Pete, can you tell us what led to Hangar deciding to host this type of event with the sled hockey program? Absolutely. I mean, this is first of all, it's such a great showcase for elite athletes. So we're you know we're thrilled to be involved from that perspective. And you know, honestly, the the Team USA it, it inspires us. It inspires our clinicians. Inspires our you know our 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 patients and. For everyone that's here in the rink, I think this is just a tremendous way to, for us to kick off the first day of our Hangar Live event. So we're, we couldn't be happier to be here and very grateful for the team, the, the Team USA, for, uh, for putting on a show for us tonight. All right, what are you most looking forward to seeing out on the ice? You know, I heard a couple of whoop whoops on the women being <laughs> on the ice at the same time as the men, so I think that's really cool. We definitely look forward to that. Um, you're, you'll see a feature later on today from uh, Lyra Doderline. And it's you know super inspirational. I think the you know the not just the the um, you know the event itself, but the, some of the stories behind the athletes is is really inspiring to all of us. So we really look forward to that. I'm personally looking forward to that. Awesome. Any last thoughts on the game tonight or the Hangar Live event this week? Yeah, I mean th this is certainly a, a great reminder of why we do what we do. I think this you know this venue, seeing these elite athletes and just seeing the you know the tremendous work that goes into you know, being, uh, being a team, and, that, and that's what we're all about, is being a great team at Hangar and showing up for our patients that we serve every day. So, you know, we're very thankful for Team USA Hockey for, you know, helping us put on such a great event. And thanks for all the players for everything they do tonight. We're looking forward to seeing the players, looking forward to seeing the game. The game is around the corner. Pete, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got player introductions. We've got the puck drop and the anthem step aside. The first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic is coming up next. Go, 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 go. Here's the thing about wrong turns. What the heck was that? They invite serendipity. Whoa! The unimaginable, the unexpected, the unforgettable. Hang on. So embrace wrong turns, because you never know. <laughs> hey. Where your next wrong turn will take you. Look at this. Wow. Toyota, let's go places. As a prosthetic or orthotic patient, you want the best care possible. At Hanger Clinic, that's exactly what we provide. We are the nation's leading provider of orthotic and prosthetic care, treating thousands of patients a year across more than 800 locations. Our expert clinicians deliver innovative, customized solutions with compassion and empathy, as well as the resources and support needed to help you thrive. That's the difference you'll find at Hanger Clinic.
Welcome back here inside the Comerica Center. We are a few minutes away from tonight's first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic alongside Taylor Lipsa, Jared Sandler here with you. And one of the things that we heard the players talk about yesterday when we had a chance to chat with some of them was just the growth of sled hockey, the movement of sled hockey. And it's really impressive when you think about where the sport was and where it is now. Yeah, without a doubt. When I first you know, started trying out for the national team back in 2004, there were, you know, maybe 20 guys that showed up for tryouts and they picked 15. Um, now you've got anywhere from 60 to 80 players show up for tryouts. And, you know, as we see here tonight, we've got at least 40 guys out here that all have a solid chance at making the roster on any given, you know, night. And so the, the competitive, competitiveness of the, of the team is so much higher today. The, the depth of the roster and the program is um, just so deep. And it's, it's a lot of uh, hard work from the players. It's a lot of time and investment from USA Hockey that they've put into the program at the grassroots level. And it's paid off in the form of gold medals. I'm going to say something quickly. I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I'm going to say this is coming from me. You know why we got U.S. versus U.S. here tonight? It's going to be a better game when the U.S. play the U.S. versus the U.S. against Canada. Better competition <laughs> on the ice when you keep it here inside the great United States of America. And we're really excited to see these guys and gals go at it and to show off that depth and the strength of this movement, the strength of this growth, and the strength of U.S. sled hockey. Without a doubt, the player said it doesn't matter that they're playing against their line mates or their friends uh, back home. They're going to lay it all out on the ice tonight, and it's going to be super competitive. They're trying to get the win. Team white, team blue. We're really, really excited for this. This is the most decorated country in the world when it comes to both men's and women's sled hockey. Uh, you know, you asked Pete a second ago what he's most looking forward to seeing. What are you most looking forward to seeing? Uh, I'm looking forward to just the display of skill on the ice tonight. I know, you know, a lot of the fans in the, in the house tonight haven't seen sled hockey before. A lot of people online watching haven't seen it before. And so it's, it's always fun for people to see the sport for the first time. But to get to see this team at this level uh, for the first time is pretty special. And I think people are going to be really amazed. All right, Brody Roybal, we got Declan Farmer. Uh, we talked to Jen Lee, Jack Wall, some of the names that a lot of people know. Give me a name that maybe people who follow this team haven't heard a ton of who uh, is your player to watch. Yeah, I've always been a fan of uh, Kevin McKee, um, number 88. I think that, you know, he, he thinks the game as fast as a player like Declan and Brody play the game. And it's tough to, to think the game as fast as they play. Um, and so it takes a special player to, to be able to do that and set players like that up. And uh, it's a lot of fun to watch his his thinking process uh, throughout the game. Well, you're going to get a chance to learn about a lot of the players here tonight, uh, both on Team White and Team Blue, uh, their stories, their accomplishments, their achievements, and just the success uh, of U.S. hockey. Again, we've got the men's national team, the women's national team represented, the development team. Quickly, for people who are wondering, uh, what's the development team? Uh, quick uh, explanation of, of these young men and, and what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, so the development team is basically the feeder program for the Paralympic team. So every summer USA Hockey hosts the development camp where the top players in the country come together and have a week-long training camp. And from that camp, we have tryouts and the development team and the national team are all chosen from that camp. And it's basically a feeder system. At any point in time, a player from the development team can be called up to the national team program We've got a player this year that has been going back and forth uh, between both rosters and Brett Bolton that we'll see out there tonight. And so it's been a, a, a great relationship between the two programs over the years. Um, I think it's been, it's been the key to our success over the last, you know, 10, 12 years. And I think, it's, I think every player on the, the national team at this point has come through the, the, the development program um, by now. Yeah. And on the men's side, back to back to back to back gold medal winning uh, teams representing the USA in the last four Paralympics and that talent on display. The women's talent, uh, an unstoppable force uh, on their end also on display here tonight and we are excited to get the show on the road. Uh, in a bit, we're gonna have introductions to the players. We've got the puck drop. Uh, here in a second, though, uh, we will send it down for our national anthem. Do you have a, a score prediction? Do you have a, a favorite team tonight? 
Oh, man. I'm going to go with five to four blue just because I got to put my money on Declan Farmer. Oh, I'm taking a look to see the white, see if they have any reactions. I, I don't know. There might be some bulletin board material for Team White. Uh, quickly, from everyone here inside the Comerica Center, make some noise for Team Blue. And Team White. All right, I love it. We're going to send it down to the voice of the Comerica Center, Mike Taylor. Sing the national anthem. Please welcome Hanger Clinic's own Gordon and Brenda North. Gordon was a prosthetist for over 30 years, while Brenda recently retired as a mastectomy fitter. After 23 years of service, both are in the Fort Worth, Texas office with clinic manager Mark Ashford. Please stand if you are able and remove your hats for our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the We are almost ready to drop the puck here tonight in Frisco. The player introductions, the two teams now skating in front of their respective goals. Uh, Taylor, we talked about the success of the men's and the women's programs, the growth. What's next? What's the next step, a part of that growth and a part of that success? Yeah, the next step is getting the women's team and the women's uh, sled hockey added to the Paralympic agenda. Uh, the the Last step was having the first International Paralympic Committee World Cup, which, again, the women brought home gold in. The next step will be having an official uh, world championship, and then they'll be qualified to be added to the Paralympic agenda, hopefully by 2030. And without a doubt, Team USA will be favorites. Uh, that women's team formally began in 2007. You mentioned uh, the Pear Ice Hockey Women's World Challenge in Green Bay. The U.S. captured first place at the... 2022 Pear Ice Hockey Women's World Challenge 4-0. They outscored opponents 22-1. to That is just sheer dominance. Without a doubt, led by Kelsey DeCladio and Lyra Doderline and Erica McKee, who we have represented here tonight. They're just so much fun to watch and such high skill. All right, we're underway here in Frisco. Team White, Team Blue, the United States versus the United States. And White with possession. There's Brody Roybal 
met by Malik Jones, and the puck is sent towards the boards. And right away, you notice something there, uh, Taylor. The, the players are not on the benches. Well, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so a lot of times in international play, like the Paralympic Games or World Championships, you'll see the players actually sitting in the bench area, and the the boards will be a plexiglass so players can see through them and see onto the ice, and we call that sled accessible. Most rinks in the United States and globally are not sled accessible. Very few rinks are accessible in that way. And so when a rink isn't sled accessible, players sit on the ice like we see here. If the puck goes over into that area, you'll see the players bump it out. If for some reason it gets caught up in the benches there, the ref will blow the whistle, uh, blow the play dead, and then we'll have a face-off. You're starting to see more and more rinks across the country adapt and become more accessible for events such as this? Definitely. A lot of rinks are going back and retrofitting uh, to become sled accessible. We've got a rink here in North Texas in Farmer's Branch that uh, they did some retrofitting to become more sled accessible. Uh, and newer rinks that are b being built are being built from the outset to, to be sled accessible, which is a good thing to see. There's a shot saved by Jen Lee. You're going to notice some number similarities. Remember, we've got three teams. We've got the men's national team, the women's national team, and we've got the men's development team. So you're going to see some players wearing the same number. Right there, though, uh, we see a nice save from a man who is the only one wearing the number 32, Jen Lee. Jen Lee is the starting goaltender on the men's Paralympic team. He's been in three Paralympic games, and he's going to make that save all day long in the white zone as the puck is trapped along the boards. One of the women uh, participating tonight, Catherine Faraday, is met uh, by Declan Farmer. And now the puck is loose. That's Kevin McKee. You talked about him in the open. Puts it in front of centering feed, but uh, Dodson unable to quite get there to uh, try put the puck behind Jen Lee. And now it's Douglas... Uh, behind the net. You can the see both teams being really physical so far, trying to establish that forecheck. As the puck goes behind the net, there's Declan Farmer, the captain of Team Blue. Josh Pauls is the national team captain, so Declan getting a chance to show off some leadership there. Is he the, the captain in waiting, perhaps, of this program? Yeah, quite possible. Um, you know, Josh Pauls has been captain for two Paralympic Games now, and he's been a part of four Paralympic teams. So, you know, definitely getting up there in tenure, and Declan Farmer is an amazing leader on and off the ice, and so I could definitely see him taking that next step when Josh Pauls retires. Roy Bull dumps it, and now the blue team into the neutral zone. Here's Declan Farmer. Centering feed just beyond the reach of his Team Blue teammate. I believe that was Rob Easley. We've got some action early on. Jen Lee's been tested a bit. For people, Taylor, who maybe aren't familiar with the sled hockey game, I know that when the U.S. take on some of these countries, the scores can be lopsided, but you predicted a 5-4 score. Is that about the... The scoring numbers you'll see in a, a three-period uh, contest between teams of, of this caliber? Yeah, that's pretty normal between, say, a U.S.-Canada or a, a U.S.-Russia type game. 3-2, um, 5-4, something like that. We got a breakaway. Declan Farmer puts the moves on, shoots, and scores! How about that? He sprung free, and he... Put Jen Lee on skates. What a pass from the defensive zone. Declan all by himself at the blue line and just walks in. You see him switch from left hand to right hand. Jen Lee goes down to take away the bottom of the net and Declan just roofs it up top. The all-time scoring leader in U.S. sled hockey history, the most goals, the most assists, the most points, not only in a single season, but in a career, and he starts the scoring off here tonight. Yeah, I told you, I put my money on him all day. 
every day. Uh, he's one of the most dynamic and exciting players in the world and has been for a long time. What makes him so special? Why is he this good? Just his pure skill and physical abilities, uh, but the, the way he sees the ice and his vision on the ice is, you know, second to none. No one sees the ice like he does and thinks the game as fast as he does. So Team Blue out to a lead, trying to add to it as the puck is in the Team White zone, but it's cleared out. So Team Blue has to reset. That's Lyra Doderline. Dumping it into the Team Blue zone. One of four women playing in tonight's game. Uh, here's a loose puck. Wallace. Jack Wallace trying to weave his way into the zone. He does. Team Blue on side. Now the puck gets trapped along the Team White bench. But a loose puck. It's grabbed by Jones. Here's Malik Jones, he's got a chance. Oh, the puck just scoots away from him. He maintains possession out to the point. McKee centering feed, but it heads towards the boards. Where Tyler Shapersky, excuse me, that's Brett Bolton who races after, one of two number 10s on Team Blue. Kevin McKee racing over to try and keep the puck in the zone. I know it's not always easy to explain, but uh, offsides in hockey, not the same as offsides in soccer. Uh, Best way to explain it to, to newbies? Yeah, the puck has to enter the zone before any other offensive player. And so in sled hockey, they determine that by the blade. So the, the front of the sled can be in the zone, uh, but the puck has to enter before the blades of the first offensive player. We're just over five minutes into the first period. Team Blue with a lead thanks to a Declan Farmer goal. Not a lot of pressure so far from Team White. We heard in the open, these two teams have scrimmaged against one another, and uh, this is the rubber match of the three-game set. Of course, this is the one that matters the most, so it's fitting that uh, the two teams split their scrimmages. Of course, makes it more exciting. Josh Pauls, nice pass. A chance back to Pauls, and he finishes! A give-and-go. Josh Pauls gets the delivery from Josh Misevitz. And we are all square at one. The captains leading their teams on the scoreboard so far here tonight. Josh Pauls with a beautiful give and go with Josh Mershevitz. We'll call Josh Pauls hanger's hero. He's a hanger patient. Um, so fitting that he gets on the board here tonight. But what a beautiful play. Uh, Josh Pauls, one of the most decorated athletes in U.S. history, he has won gold in each of the last four Paralympics, a part of the 2010, 2014, 2018, and the 2022 teams, and he served as the captain of the last two. Back comes Team Blue, and an attempt on net from DeClaudio is turned away, and I think we have our first penalty of the night. Yeah, it looks like the referee's calling T-boning on Brody Roybal for the hit on Kelsey DeClaudio. And Brody not too pumped with the call. You know, I think some people might think, oh, this is an exhibition, we're going to have fun. But uh, no, no, no. These two teams and these players made it very clear to us last night how much winning this game and winning uh, this first ever Sled Hockey Live Challenge means to them. Uh, what do we have going on here? Oh, it looks like we're not doing power plays. They're just going to do a, a penalty shot. So here's Kelsey to Claudio. All alone, and nice job by Roybal coming back from behind. Jen Lee with a brick wall as the puck drifted towards the line, and they're going to say no goal as Jen Lee able to keep it from going in with the pressure, trying to push him into the net. Yeah, being strong on his line there. You can see Kelsey just got hit from behind by Brody there just to dislodge the puck from her stick. Interesting. I, I wasn't aware that we weren't doing power plays, but I guess that keeps the pace of play going a little bit. That's some excitement. Yeah. And, hey, how about Brody Roybal? He was the reason for that uh, shootout opportunity. He's the one who came back and made a play to uh, keep 
Kelsey DeClaudio from putting one in the back of the net. Little chance for redemption there. Kelsey DeClaudio, one of the most dynamic women's players in the world, but really one of the most dynamic sled hockey players in the world. She's got some of the best hands uh, in the sport of sled hockey. Her stick handling ability is, you know, some of the best in the world, and she's been a lot of fun to, to play against over the years. She'll make you look silly out there. Captain America Jack Wallace to Escobedo. Here's the Claudio saved by Lee. Loose puck. Wallace chases after it, and I'll tell you what, the size of Jack Wallace, the way he moves, he just stands out. Yeah, he's he has a big frame, hands hands down. You know, there's you can't argue that, and you know, a lot a lot of times people think that you've got an advantage if you're a double amputee because you've got less frame um, and you're able to, to skate faster or turn sharper but Jack Wallace who stands 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and is a large human being is just as fast and dominant out there as anyone. Uh, offside so the puck will exit the zone for the face off. We are tied at one. The captain's have scored Josh Paul's equalized after Declan Farmer got things going. Here's Wallace with possession. Jones into the zone. Three on two, centering feed to Jones, turned away by Lee once and turned away again. And it's cleared out as Team Blue chasing after it. That's Rob Easley who's able to track it down. Rob Easley, one of the newer additions to the men's Paralympic team. Him and Malik Jones both play on the Denver Avalanche sled team in Colorado. Now here's Team White. Evan Nichols. And there's Wallace just making life difficult for anyone who's trying to get by him with the puck. And look at him go. All by himself into the zone. Fancy stick work. Puts it towards the middle, but a nice job by Brendan Cormier. Team Blue, they're out chancing Team White here in the first period. Jones, Wallace from the point. He whips one on net, but uh, just above the crossbar. Here's the 16-year-old Brett Bolton against the veteran Josh Pauls. How's that for a matchup? There you go, yeah. It's like uh, kind of going back in time. Josh Pauls first made the team when he was 15, 16 years old. So it's cool to kind of see him kind of passing on some of the, uh, the knowledge that he's gained over the years to that next generation. It was great talking to Brett Bolton last night, asking him, hey, tell me something about you. Uh, I take calc too. <laughs> <laughs> he's still in school and... Uh, I'd say taking calculus, too, for a 16-year-old, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, he said he's somewhat of a math whiz, but I just happen to also know that he's a, a track star as well. So he runs on his high school track team as well as being a sled hockey player. And that's one cool thing about a lot of the athletes that we have out here tonight. We've got a bunch of uh, multi-sport athletes that compete at a very high level. Lara Doderline is a Paralympic biathlon and cross-country skier. Jack Wallace, uh, a, a para canoe and kayak uh, racer. So true athletes out here tonight. Yeah, Brett Bolton, a state champion. Uh, track and field, the, the javelin, the shot put, and the 200 meter. You could hear that hit along the boards right there just to, to reinforce uh, this is full contact and the physicality is a huge aspect of this sport. It was Eustace who brought it in the zone, but Team Blue able to clear it out. Daniel Malloy and Isaac Escobedo trying to regain possession, but Team White gets it in the zone. There's a shot on net just wide off the stick of Noah Grove. And the goalie for Team Blue, Griffin Lamar, uh, wasn't tested a ton early, but Team White's starting to uh, put some pressure on him. Noah looked like he knew where he was trying to go with that one. He plays on the same club team as Griffin Lamar, so perhaps he knew uh, something we didn't. There's Chris Douglas in the corner. Left wing, Doderline, out towards the point. Royble battling with Farmer and 
Malloy, and that puck is sent down towards Team White's net. Douglas, lead pass up to Roybal. That one is too high as it caroms off of the Team Blue bench. And the busy man, that's Sam Becker. Uh, Team White starting to find a rhythm, a loose puck, but Wallace is able to get there just ahead of Evan Nichols taking away a potential breakaway. Wallace just so fast to recover, and now we have Malik Jones. He's got one man to beat, and he beats him. Malik Jones gets it by Jen Lee, and Team Blue retakes the lead. Malik Jones, such a fun player to watch. You just see him use his pure speed to outrace Douglas, and he goes left to right and slides it right under Jen's arm as he outstretches. Malik Jones played in his first Paralympic Games in Beijing last year as a teenager, and you know he got added to the team, and you know no one. He definitely earned his spot, but you know you try not to have expectations for someone that um, you know is a, a rookie in their first Paralympic Games because it can be quite overwhelming. And he showed up and he showed out. One of the the most impressive players on Team USA in Beijing, and without a doubt, helped them win that gold medal. You know, he credits his grandmother for getting him into sled hockey, and I think one of the interesting nuggets for all these athletes is. You know, what pushed them towards sled hockey? And, you know, all the players, different stories, different reasons. Uh, and, you know, for Malik Jones, it was grandma who gave him that little nudge. Yeah, it's really cool to hear the different stories that people have. Um, you know, one of the, the cool things about this event and partnering with Hanger Prosthetics is to uh, hear about people that uh, got introduced from their prosthetist. 2.34 to go here in the first period. Hey, let's go down to Mallory Wegeman with Team Blue on top, leading Team White 2-1. to one. I'm not ready. Uh, they're still playing. We are down on the ice with Josh Pauls, four-time Paralympic gold medalist for Team USA, only player to be a part of that epic four-peat. But the white team, you had the first goal, and now you guys are down by one. What was that vibe in the locker room before you all came out? I mean, I think we're just really excited to be playing here, play, competing against each other and getting getting better. Iron sharpens iron. So to be able to make, you know, every level of this sport a little bit better, I think is the ultimate goal. All right. Well, we can't wait to watch the rest of the game, and we hope we see you guys put up another goal. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. It's Mallory. Always great hearing from Josh Pauls, someone who's got just such an incredible wealth of experience and accomplishment. You know, the, the four leading scores and – U.S. sled hockey history are all on the ice. For people wondering how the current group blends in with the the, the past, you got Declan Farmer, Brody Roybal, uh, Brody Roybal, excuse me, Josh Pauls, and Kevin McKee. Uh, and Declan, 246 points. He's approaching 250. Uh, you were on that list at one point. I, I'm joined by one of the all-time greats in U.S. sled hockey history, but. Uh, how much do you love seeing some of these guys climb the charts? I absolutely love it. They're just so fun to watch. And, um, you know, they work so well together and they're so talented and creative. And, you know, the, the way they go about their business and the way they push the sport forward has been so good for the sport. And um, the things they've been able to accomplish has been a lot of fun to, to witness and be able to call. There's Eustace using the boards as his friend. One on one with Lamar, takes it to the left and a little contact and Griffin Lamar breaks it up. Nice job there by the goaltender. What did he do to make things tough? Yeah, came out and challenged the angle by coming out to the top of the crease and then he went for a little poke check and uh, disrupted Eustace as he came in. Eustace, another teammate of Griffin Lamar on his club team, the Northeast Passage Wildcats up in New Hampshire. You mentioned the clubs. These guys and gals play for clubs outside of just representing the country. How would you explain that dynamic in the club sled hockey scene? Yeah, club hockey is, you know, the grassroots level. That's where everyone gets started. 
Um, you know, there's club, there's club programs all throughout the country. We've really seen it grow over the last 10, 20 years. And we've, we've got, you know, a number of teams. Uh, we've got over 1,500 registered sled hockey players in the United States at this point. And that's really the, the basis of the success of these programs is that, that grassroots level growing. And um, it, it all comes together at this level when, when that grassroots level is successful. Inside of a minute. Here in the opening period, Josh Paul is already with one goal, the only goal for Team White. Musselman from the left side, and that one scoots away. Farmer picks it up. Team Blue trying to put something together before the end of the period. Farmer flipped it up ahead, but it didn't quite get to its intended target. Musselman spinning his way away from Malloy. Puck behind the net, Pauls. Up to Cormier. Brandon Adam was giving chase. Farmer's got it. Near the white bench. They kind of bumper it back out, and that's going to do it. 15 minutes in the books. we got 30 minutes to go, one period down, and Team Blue with the early lead. It was Declan Farmer who started the scoring. Then we saw Josh Pauls even it up, but how Team Blue the lead as we head to the first intermission. Team Blue on top here in Frisco. serendipity Whoa! the unimaginable the unexpected the unforgettable hang on so embrace wrong turns because you never know <laughs> hey where your next wrong turn will take you look at this wow toyota let's go places hi my name is katie i'm an office administrator here at hangar clinic I have previously worked in the front office at other companies, but nothing compares to working here. It's the most rewarding job I have ever had. What I love about my job is connecting with the patients. I'm the first person they see when they walk through the door. They are often going through a really tough time, and that first interaction can make all the difference. Not only do I get to know our patients, they often become like family, from coordinating their care to answering questions. My number one goal is making sure they have a smooth experience. I'm an important part of the impact our prosthetic and orthotic care has on their lives. Being able to witness a patient walk for the first time or reach a new goal is really special. And that is why I love what I do. That is why I work for Hanger Clinic. Build a life-changing career at Hanger Clinic. If you have administrative experience and want a rewarding opportunity, positions are available nationwide. Medical background not required. Visit our careers website today. Welcome back inside the Comerica Center. How about that first period? We had some scoring right away from Declan Farmer. You mentioned he, he was your guy. You didn't want to pick against Declan Farmer. And then Josh Pauls, the other captain, with a goal to even things up. And then we saw Malik Jones give Team Blue the lead. It is 2-1 to one through 15 minutes of action. Yeah, really exciting. I thought the pace was really fast. We saw some physicality, some big hits out there. Uh, and I would expect uh, the teams to kind of turn it up in the second period. How about the speed and the skating ability of someone like Jack Wallace just moving his way up and down the ice? He's so big, but he's so fast. Yeah, I can tell you uh, from play, playing against him in the past that he just seems to be everywhere at all times uh, when, you, when you're playing against him. And that's what it looks like out there. He's, he's everywhere uh, when he's on the ice. All right, well, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first period. Uh, Declan Farmer... Uh, using the left and using the right, able to show off that stick work, a great feed from the defensive zone, and uh, he was able to start the scoring, but 
uh, where we see Josh Pauls evening things up. Yeah, that left and right, back and forth under the sled is one of the unique things about sled hockey, and it really makes it tough on goaltenders because you don't know which way the player's going, and it makes it almost impossible to defend against because we can just go back and forth so fast. Um, but yeah, being ambidextrous like that and being able to use both hands is one of the keys to being a great player in this sport. You saw that on both of Team Blue's goals there. And we see the goal from Malik Jones to give Team Blue that 2-1 to one lead. So... One period down, two to go. I, I want this to go like nine periods. This has been so much fun. Hey, for more, let's go down to Mallory Wegeman. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jared. I am here with Brett Bolton. You are on the blue team. You guys are up 2-1 coming out of the first period. What is the energy on the ice like? It's so amazing. Everybody's so excited. We love playing with each other. And when Malik got that second goal, it just energized the whole bench. Now, you're 16 years old. You're on the development team. You've been called up to the national team a few times. We're a few years out from the 2026 Paralympic Games. What are your goals in this sport? So my goal is to definitely become a Paralympian by 2026. Uh, it's such a long journey, but it's so much fun, and I love working hard every day and playing with these guys out here. It's a dream come true. Now, you've got a great team on the ice, and we have these fans in the arena. What is it like having this much energy supporting you guys as you're playing? It's amazing. We love all of you guys. It really means a lot for all of you guys to come out and watch us to debut our sport to all of the new audiences. I love having a team out here and having everybody cheer for us. Well, thank you so much, Brett, and back to you, Jared. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, Mallory mentioned Brett 16. We're going to get to the stats in a second. We had a chance to talk to Brett. I know we mentioned this during the first period, but the people here inside the Comerica Center didn't hear this. And we asked some of the guys and gals, hey, tell us something about you. And Brett's like, ah, well, I'm not sure. And then he said, well, I, I take Calc 2. <laughs> he's 16, he's still in school, and he's taking Calc 2. I don't think I could take Calc 2 no matter how old or young I was, but uh, <laughs> impressive on the ice, impressive in the classroom, and impressive as a track and field competitor as well. Yeah, I would go with that as being his, uh, his interesting fact, is that he's a dual sport athlete and a state champion in track and field in his home state of Florida. So uh, an impressive athlete, and it's awesome to see him get a chance to play with the men's national team as a 16-year-old, and uh, his blue team is up here in the, the first intermission. Now let's take a look at the stats. Team Blue leading Team White 2-1 to one in the rubber match of the three games, the first two, of course, were just scrimmages. This is the one that counts. But uh, what stands out to you when you look at some of the numbers here from the first 15 minutes? I think things are pretty even. Obviously, blue is up two to one, but shots on goal, eight to six. Just a slight advantage there for the, for the blue team. And then saves, five to six. So goaltenders are playing good. But, yeah, I, th I think the teams are pretty evenly matched. And I expect to, to have a pretty competitive uh, second and third period. And... Again, these teams or these players don't like to lose, and so they're going to come out here and, and try to score the next goal on each side, and it's going to be super competitive. Take us into that team white locker room. You're down two to one. What's the big adjustment that you're focusing on going into the second period? They'll just want to focus on um, cleaning up their passing, uh, you know, really making passes tape to tape, not having turnovers, uh, and then just shooting the puck, putting the puck on the net. Good things happen when you, when you shoot the puck, and so I think that'll be the key, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, Jen Lee has been very busy in that opening period. He's doing a really good job. If it wasn't for Jen Lee, 2-1 might be 3 or 4-1. Uh, Griffin Lamar on the other end obviously holding uh, Team White to just one goal. If you're Team Blue, I know you're in the lead, but you don't want to take your foot off the pedal. So what's the key for them going into the second period? Yeah, just keep doing the same thing that you're doing. Um, be, be aggressive, keep attacking, forechecking, and keep shooting the puck. All right, well, one of the competitors out there is 19-year-old Lyra Doderline, uh, whose journey from across the world has led her to passion and success in more than one adaptive sport. You talk about dual sport athletes. How about Lyra Doderline, and in part thanks to the possibilities she found through the Hanger Clinic. From a really young age, I was always in love with sports, but at the same time, I didn't know what adaptive sports were, and I always felt a bit of a barrier between myself and typical sports for able-bodied kids. I was able to grow up alongside my older brother, Isaac Doderline, 
who's been doing jujitsu since he was 11 years old. That kind of helped me to create an idea in my head that anybody can do anything, especially in the world of sport. My name is Lyra Dodeline. I'm a 2022 Paralympian in the sport of cross-country skiing and biathlon. Well, I was born in 2003 in a little town in Saratov, Russia, with an immediate disability called arthrogryposis, and it affected both my hips and my legs and didn't allow me to walk the way kids typically would. So I was immediately put up for adoption, and just about two years later, my now parents from the U.S. adopted me. I was immediately put in orthotics. I used KFOs and crutches to get around up until the age of 14. I went through seven or eight procedures uh, trying to create better mobility and independence for me, especially as a young kid. It became tougher over time. And one year when I was around 13 years old, my doctor recommended amputations for the first time. My parents and I both were extremely stunned by the idea, but I quickly came to the conclusion that that was kind of the direction I needed to head into if I wanted to become more independent as a growing young woman and teenager at the time. About a year later, I decided to double amputate and start my recovery, which is kind of where everything spiraled into me, finding adaptive sports and hangar clinic. After my surgery, I was able to go into the hangar clinic and get my first prosthetics fit. And even just that first experience with my clinician and their assistant was pretty life-changing. Having an amputee there who worked there as a clinician was really special for a new patient like me. Having that comfort of knowing somebody is going through the same thing as you was really helpful. That's what I've always loved about Hanger Clinic is they've got so many people who are going through the same things and know exactly what kind of things you need being built into your prosthetics. The prosthetics that I wear day to day are C4 prosthetics. They're legit robots. They're just a microprocessor computer in both knees that are programmed to let me walk down stairs and ramps and upstairs and on all different terrain. I wouldn't have been able to walk in these legs without the help of Hanger Clinic. The first time I learned about sled hockey was at my first appointment getting prosthetics fit. The CMPT, he was missing one leg above the knee. He came in and he's like, hey, I play sled hockey. You should come try it. I went to my first practice about a week or two later. And as soon as I got on the ice, it was one of those first moments where I realized just skating around felt so freeing and independent. And it was just a surreal moment of realizing that this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. In 2019, I got to meet Oksana Masters, who is both the world champion and Paralympic all-star in cross-country skiing and biathlon and also cycling. She tried to recruit me through the U.S. Para development team for skiing and biathlon. As soon as I got on the snow, it was kind of one of those events where I started skiing and realized that I loved the sport. And eventually, I worked for about a year and a half I was actually able to qualify for the 2022 Beijing Games. And I was able to compete there and I placed top 10 in a few races. It was just an amazing experience overall. No Bad Days kind of just came up. I feel like when I was kind of recovering from my amputations back in 2017, and because it can be really hard sometimes when you're going through a lot of ups and downs, whether it's in recovery from surgery, or training, or high school, or just regular day-to-day -day life. No Bad Days is kind of just trying to stay positive and kind of being uh, appreciative and grateful of all the opportunities that I've had, especially in adaptive sports. Combine the precision of a mechanic the fast pace of a welder, the creativity of an artist, and what do you get? A unique job in the growing field of orthotics and prosthetics. At Hangar, we have a variety of opportunities at one of our nearly 900 locations throughout the country with plenty of room for growth and education, including on-the-job training. The person in charge of how high you go is you. From working on cars to welding, I've always enjoyed working with my hands. At Hangar, a day in the life of a technician includes all types of hand tools, power tools, you name it, we use it in the workshop. 
I'm able to apply my skills to create custom devices and solve unique challenges. The best part is seeing a patient walk for the first time on a leg that I helped make and helping them get back to an active life. There's no other job or feeling quite like this. Build a career that changes lives. At Hangar, jobs are available nationwide and medical experience isn't required. If you like working with your hands and are looking for a long-term rewarding opportunity, visit our careers website today. Welcome back here inside the Coverica Center. Two to one, Team Blue leading Team White. One period down, two to go alongside Taylor Lipson. Jared Sandler with you. We'll hear from Mallory Wegeman in a bit, but uh, Taylor it was great learning more about Lyra Doderline's story. It all starts with you know, that relationship with Hanger. What sort of an impact has Hanger had? Yeah, really, it's just about giving individuals independence. And, you know, I think Lyra, you know, discussed that in her, her feature there. And, you know, giving people the opportunity to just live independent lives makes such a difference. And, um, you know, it changed her life. And, you know, now it's allowed her to pursue two different sports. And, it, you know, with, without a doubt, it's changed her life and what she's been able to do and accomplish and the things she's been able to pursue. And that's the type of impact that, you know, these people can now take back to just their everyday lives that they, um, and jobs that they have at Hangar. You know, the, the goal is to expose them to sled hockey here, and now they can go back and, you know, tell their patients uh, about the sport of sled hockey, about other adaptive sports, and they're kind of our first line of recruitment in the uh, adaptive sport world. Lyra, one of four women a part of tonight's event, Catherine Faraday, Kelsey DeCladio, Lyra Doderline, and then the women's team captain, Erica McKee. Some family ties going on here tonight, Erica McKee uh, and Kevin McKee. Uh, I wonder what that's like with those two sharing the ice at once. Oh, yeah. Th they're, they're teammates uh, on the Chicago Blackhawks, um, but I think they're on opposite teams here tonight, and so I don't know how often they've played against each other. Um, so maybe that's a storyline we've got to keep an eye on, see if Erica tries to, you know, lay Kevin out a little bit, send a message for back home maybe. Uh, Erica on Team White, Kevin on Team Blue, a husband-wife combo. No, Erica has really helped pioneer the movement to bring uh, the women's team to the Paralympics starting you know, more than a decade ago and, you know, would really hope that she gets that opportunity to represent the United States of America at the Paralympics, in addition to uh, the opportunities she's had representing the country in other competitions we've talked about already and the success that the women have had. Yep, she definitely deserves that opportunity, and she's been such an important person, you know, in not just the, the world of women's sled hockey, but just sled hockey in general. Um, she's put in so much time and effort. Uh, you know, giving back to the sport and recruiting players. And, um, yeah, she definitely deserves that, that opportunity. And so happy that she got to win a gold medal at the, the Women's World Challenge and excited to see her to continue to lead the way for the women's game. All right, second period underway, and we have different uh, men between the pipes for Team Blue. Taggart Vandermolen is uh, the new goalie, and then... Uh, for Team White, we've got Sean Gallagher. So uh, Jen Lee, who's uh, G1 uh, for the U.S., and, and Griffin Lamar, both you know, big parts of what the United States are doing, uh, probably getting uh, maybe the rest of the night off to give everyone a little bit of a chance. We have three goalies on either team, so I imagine that uh, each goalie will get a period of their own. Yep, I think that's the, the goal here for the coaches is give everyone a chance to play a period. Jin Lee, you know, had a, a really tough job last year in Beijing at the 22 or the 2022 Paralympic Games and, um, you know, taking over the, the crease for Steve Cash, who was the goaltender for Team USA for the, the previous 10 years. Um, Steve Cash, the, the greatest goaltender in sled hockey history. Um, and, you know, again, Jin Lee had a huge shoes to fill, and he was able to do that and um, help Team USA win a fourth gold medal in a row. And uh, it was really great to see him accomplish that as the starting goaltender after putting in so many years as Steve's backup. As Steve started with the U.S. national team at 16 and recently inducted into the USA Hockey Hall of Fame, 
someone with whom I know you've got a, a really special relationship, and uh, I'm sure that honor, uh, you know, not only meant the world to Steve, but you know, just representing sled hockey and the way that he did it uh, with the leadership and the success that he had. And, and you know, the Steve Cash legacy uh, doesn't die with his retirement uh, because you look at Taggart Vandermoel and uh, he was mentored by Steve Cash. He first met him, I think, at a camp when he was you know, like 10 years old and, uh, you know, started just developing that relationship, that line of communication. So uh, maybe we see a little bit of Steve Cash in the the young man wearing number one for Team Blue. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, that's one of the special things about Steve is that he was always willing to pass on his knowledge and expertise and work with that next generation of players. And, um, you know, I think he's he's done that. And, you know, one of, the, one of the things that you see is how all the players on Team USA, all the goalies, sit with their legs stretched out in front of them. One of the trends we see in the world of sled hockey now is goaltenders sitting cross-legged um, which, again, no Team USA goalie does that, but uh, I think that goes to, you know, that goes back to Steve. He's he's taught these goalies, you know, how to play the position with their legs stretched out in front of them. He's proven that you can be elite sitting in that way, and um, again, the, the records speak for themselves, and the gold medals speak for themselves, um, but yeah, his, his ability to, to give back and train that next generation of goaltenders is one of the things that makes him special. What's the advantage of that position as a goalie compared to having the legs cross? I mean, when you have your legs in front of you, you take up more space when you drop down, right? Oh, here we go. We got a chance for Team White. Lyra Doderline on net. Oh, what a save, but the rebound scored. That's number 13, I believe, Brendan Cormier picking up the trash and able to even things up. Great first save by Taggart on Lyra, but Brendan right on the tell to pick up the rebound. Well, right on cue, we're talking about you know, having your legs out straight in front of you, and it was to Taggart Vandermolen's advantage there. He just didn't get the help from uh, his, his teammates and the D to try and uh, kick things away. Yeah, there was no defenseman back checking like you said to help him out there um, White with the opportunity to get one back and tie the game there at two Vanderbilt almost giving it away he does Roybal takes it away from him centering feed puck loose in front rebound Roybal trying to lift it he does it's in Brody Roybal on the board and just like that Team White's erased the deficit and they've taken a three to two lead. I told you they were gonna come out firing. They do not like losing, they don't like being down. Brody Roybal, one of the ones that hates losing the most and so you saw him flying into the zone four checking, putting that pressure on Taggart who was trying to puck handle uh, as the goaltender down there created the turnover and then was just patient in front of the net. Waited till he had an opportunity to shoot and then shot it up high. Team White with the lead. Now we've seen goals now from three of the four all-time leading scorers, Pauls, Farmer, Roybal. I don't know. Are we gonna are we gonna give Kevin McKee a hard time if he doesn't find the back of the net at some point? He's Number four on that list, it goes in this order. Farmer, Roybal, Pauls, McKee, and uh, Kevin McKee, 120 points in 135 career games. Uh, really putting some numbers to his incredible career. Nice save there by Vandermolen on the attempt off the stick of Nichols. Yeah, at the beginning of Kevin McKee and Brody and Declan's careers, they all played together on the same line, and you want to talk about a line that was a lot of fun to watch. That line was a lot of fun to watch, and they dominated a lot of sled hockey games. You racked up a lot of points. Puck just off the net, and here's Nichols. A uh, little bit of a wraparound attempt, but stymied. Good job there by Liam Cunningham. There's the pass up to... Faraday just beyond her reach. Let's puck around center ice. Blue teams looked a little discombobulated here in the beginning of the second period. Not really sure 
what the message was there in, in the locker room in between the periods, but they look a little lackadaisical, so let's see if we can, or if they can kind of pull things together, settle down a bit. A lot of back and forth in that first period, but Team White's really controlled possession here in the second. There's nice back check there. A big contact. That was, I think, Tyler Shapersky. Checking such a huge part of this game and that physical, you know, part of, of hockey is, is, you know, so important in establishing um, kind of that, that tone that you want to set on the ice, the, the style that, you know, a team wants to play throughout a game. Roybal shot blocked. And Declan Farmer got in the way. Puck around center ice. Farmer flips it up. Racing after it. He's got Dodson. Can he beat them? And he does. Farmer to Dodson. And we're tied at three. Farmer just tried to chip it in the zone. And Dodson just turned on the Jets. Goaltender wasn't quite sure if he should come out or not. Hesitated just a half second too long and decided to try to come out and play the puck. And Dotson just beat him there. Again, we saw that stick handling. He went right to left and just slid it into an open net. Sean Gallagher caught in no man's land. There's Farmer, some crafty skating, a little spinorama. Over to Dotson. They just hooked up for the third goal for Team Blue. Farmer with a couple of points, a goal and an assist. Wallace able to deflect it, but Pauls gets the loose puck. Lead pass up ahead and unable to handle it. That was Noah Grove. Puts it on net, and it's gloved up by Taggart Vandermolen. Smart play by Taggart just to get the whistle, settle things down. We are tied at 3, 8.20 to go. You know, this game is kind of the cherry on top for uh, these men and women because uh, there's been a pretty uh, pretty intense training camp that's gone on the last few days. They've come here for business. This is fun. They're enjoying this. Uh, but leading up to this, a lot of work was accomplished. Yeah, one of the one of the cool things about this event is that, you know, they've been here since Friday and they've had five practices leading into the game here tonight and so they've had a full-on training camp they've made the most of every day that they've been here in town uh, they've gotten to do some meet and greets with some hangar people throughout the weekend but yeah they've been here on business they've been on the ice they've done video sessions off the ice they've had team meetings um, they've really made the most of this opportunity to be together thanks to hangar and um, everyone for bringing them in town and um, you know they've definitely uh become a better team because of this event what is the practice schedule like so you got a, a training camp there's a big contact there Bolton collides uh, with uh, I believe that might have been Sam Becker and here's Malloy on net turned away nice save by Gallagher is that one sent to the sideboards team blue still with the puck nice pass over to McKee Nichols behind the net team white trying to get out of the zone and they're not able to. It's kept in. McKee races after it. Uh, to the middle, but uh, there's Nichols who's there. And uh, we've got a stoppage with 6.57 to go. We're tied at three. I want to get to that practice schedule here in a second. Uh, just a quick recap. We've already had three goals this period. The most recent one coming from Team Blue tying things up. Uh, it is tied at three. And with 6.57 to go, let's go down to Mallory. And we are down on the ice with Dan Brennan. Dan, what a unique experience here for Team USA. Hangar has brought you all in for this experience. What has it been like for you? Uh, hectic, but to see it come to fruition tonight with an amazing event. Great fans are here. Hangar's done an amazing job. What an incredible partner. Everything was um, so smooth, and everyone you work with had a great can-do attitude. They've made an unbelievable experience for our players, and uh, it's really uh, just a treat to be here. It's awesome. All right, well, let's get back to that game. Back up to you, Jared. Thanks so much, Mallory, and uh, thanks so much to the entire U.S. hockey staff on the men's side, the women's side, the development side for 
all their work and their commitment. And, you know, it's really neat, and, and you can speak to this, Taylor, you know, the, the roles that these men and women play as coaches, as mentors, as leaders, it really goes in a, a really long way for these players. Yeah, it definitely does. You know, there's there's a lot of time that's spent, you know, with with the staff and the players on these trips. Well, Escobedo, after the penalty, not able to get a clean shot on net. Puck behind the net. He's battling with Nick Witkowski. Blue maintains possession. Dotson, who scored earlier. Nice save by Gallagher. He got a glove on it. As Roybal will get it out. Witkowski chasing after it. It's Witkowski and Escobedo. And Escobedo able to use the body to uh, make sure he maintains possession. Some good Here's back. Esco oh, sorry. Some good back and forth here by both teams. Not a ton of high-quality scoring chances, but we're seeing the pace of play pick up a bit. Really showing off, you know, how fast-paced sled hockey can be. Team Blue getting it out. Dodson sort of pushing the puck out with Grove maintaining possession. So that practice schedule, what's it like for these players? Yeah, typically for a training camp, you'll have two practices a day. Um, you know, they'll, they'll try to squeeze in some video sessions where you'll watch previous games um, from, you know, different events to try to pick it apart, you know, learn from it, um, do some team building activities, um, but, you know, really just try to make the most of, of everything. Once you get closer to the Paralympic Games, do some off-ice training as well. Wow! What a shot! Wallace flipped it up. A little bit of pace as he roofs one just above the reach of Gallagher. We talked a lot about Jack Wallace. Captain America gives Team Blue the lead. You see him just skate behind the net. I think the goaltender thought he was going to pass across the farmer who was sitting back door and he was just patient with the puck and then flipped it up top over the goaltender's glove hand such a tough play to do on your backhand skating away from the goal really takes a lot of strength to do uh, two time gold medalist he grew up a Devils fan in that area he was a big fan of Martin Brodeur I don't think Martin Brodeur would like what he's done to opposing goalies over the years. Uh, he probably does like what he does to protect his own as uh, a blue liner, but, uh, man, he he just gave Sean Gallagher a nightmare. Yeah, I'm not sure anyone would have saved that goal. That was perfectly placed right over the goalie's shoulders. As a sled hockey goalie, when you're sitting so close to the ice, when a, when a shot is perfectly placed, kind of right over your shoulder, close to the helmet, it's almost physically impossible to get a glove or a blocker up in that area. So just a great shot by, by Wallace. Biomedical engineering major? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What, what, what can't he do? Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely helps bring the IQ up a little bit <laughs> on this team. Uh, between him and Declan Farmer, who's a Princeton grad, uh, again, they, they help raise that average IQ number. Puck sent around the boards. McKee keeps it in. Malloy in the corner with Witkowski, who's been really active here in this period. Just outside the circle. And now Brody Roybal. He saucers one across the blue line, just out of the reach of Nichols. So Team Blue able to get it back in, and they'll change. Roybal near the half wall. Menza. And here's McKee, Team Blue, trying to add to the lead. And McKee has it poked away. Dotson's got it, and Gallagher gets a glove on it. You can see Blue really starting to focus on that four check again, creating turnovers in the offensive zone. They're just not giving the, the white defenders any time with the puck to get it out of the zone. Every time a, a player in white touches the puck, there's a blue player on them, creating turnovers, keeping it in the zone. And eventually that leads to a mistake. The Claudio. 
Nichols able to poke it away. Uh, there's the back check for uh, Team White, but Team Blue keeping it in the zone. Royable has it taken away from him. Eric Knotts, number 12 on blue, and Kelsey DeCladio, number 11. Uh, another couple off the ice. They've been together for a number of years. But they're on the same team. They are on the same team. They're working together tonight, unlike the McKees. I guess when you're <laughs> married, they split you up. Until you get to that point, you can be on the same team. Yeah, we're, we're not trying to ruin any relationships. <laughs> There's Knotts with the puck behind the nets. Over to DeCladio. Puck in the zone for Team White. They really haven't had many of those opportunities. McKee sends it across the ice. Grove circling back. Puck off the left stick of Musselman who has it turned wide by Vandermolen. Two minutes to go here in the second period. Team Blue with the lead. Jack Wallace's goal, the difference. He put one up top moments ago. We've had seven goals, seven different goal scorers tonight. Grove spinning away from trouble. White team taking some notes from Blue a little bit earlier as they establish that four check. And here's Lyra. Dodderline shot just wide. She's had a couple of nice chances here in the second. She's definitely one of the most exciting Women sled hockey players in the world to watch, but really just one of the most exciting players uh, to watch. Her vision on the ice. Wow! There's Noah Grove. Upper 90 just above the reach of Vandermolen. He was going to his right. He sent it back to the left, and we've got our eighth different goal score, and we are tied once again. Again, he, he kind of went to that same area that Jack went down on the other end, just over the, the blocker side instead of the glove. You saw the goaltender try to raise his, his blocker up to get to the puck, but just physically can't raise your, your arm any higher than that. And Noah Grove put the puck right up over the, the shoulder, below the kind of the ear area of the goaltender, right inside the post. Made his national team debut in 2016. Also on the U.S. amputee soccer team. Talk about those athletes. No Grove, one of them. Yep. His nickname is Peaches, Peaches on the national team. Noah Grove. We got some great nicknames. We're going to learn a little bit more about Spuds, Josh Pauls. Coming up after this period. Here's the lead pass up to Wallace. Can he get there? Oh, no, he doesn't. And it's covered up by Gallagher. Uh, we are tied at 432 seconds left. That would have been an impressive demonstration, demonstration of speed if Wallace could get there. Yep, that would have been a, that was a great lead pass. Just a bit out of his reach. Couldn't wrangle it in, but eight different goal scores, eight goals. My 5-4... Uh, Goal prediction is still at play here, but we've seen a lot of goals this period. I don't know that it's going to hold up. Team Blue trying to add to their total and take a lead. We've gone back and forth. Both teams have led so far tonight easily. A little more than 10 seconds to go in the period, and that centering feed came with no one there. So Team White going to just try and bleed the clock out. Wallace, can he pull it on before? Oh, he got the shot off, but it whipped wide. And we are going to go to the second intermission, tied at four. Jack Wallace almost beating the buzzer with a snipe. Uh, but this back and forth contest continues. Again, eight goals, eight goal scores for Team Blue. We've seen goals from Farmer, uh, Malik Jones, Dodson, and Wallace for Team White. Brody Roybal has put one in the back of the net. Brendan Cormier. We've also seen goals from Noah Grove and Josh Pauls. And that's how we have gotten to our 4-4 score with 15 minutes left to go here tonight. We talked yesterday. What, what happens with a tie? Well, uh, we're seeing that sort of intense competition. Yeah, we'll see if uh, it, it ends in a tie. But I think these teams want to win in regulation. So we'll see how they come out in the third period. <laughs> They've been working hard. They don't want to add any 
more than what they need. Now, in the last decade, no U.S.-led hockey game has been complete without Josh Paul, as we've talked about. The two-time Paralympic captain who's in his 14th season with the national team. He now has his sights set on how he can help the sport continue to grow in the future. I just remember watching my dad watch a Devils game on TV. He was trying to explain all the, the stuff, like how icing isn't actually like icing on a cake, and that was pretty disappointing as a kid. But I, I was interested in it, and it, it evolved to wanting to play goalie in the driveway that my dad indulged me on. I think it started off as something that was fun to do and something that got me out of the house, got me playing a sport and something I really enjoyed doing. I guess I just had the mental capacity to realize that I needed to give it my all if I wanted to make it something that was going to be a part of my life for basically the rest of it. I'm Josh Pauls, four-time Paralympian from St. Louis, Missouri. I was, you know, born to two parents and they had to make the difficult decision to uh, amputate my legs at 10 months old because I was born without tibia bones. My parents made that choice and I started walking in prosthetics at a year old. My mom came into my class when I first went to school and said, hey, this is Josh, these are his legs, they work, a little bit different. Prosthetics is a mobility device, is a way that I could get up and active and not be confined to one spot, one way of transportation. Prosthetics for me have really given me just the ability to move around and do everything that I want to do. When I first saw sled hockey, we, my parents and I went to a game. It was a sled team versus an able body hockey team in Bridgewater, New Jersey, and they played each other. The sled team kicked the daylights out of the stand-up team that had just been in sleds. The team opened up in my area in Woodbridge, New Jersey, about a half hour away, and I just fell in love. It was just something of, I want to do this. And, you know, I had so many people from my parents to my sister to, you know, everyone in my family that was gung-ho and letting me pursue my passion. And so I think that really helped having that support system. With my prosthetics, I have direct suction on my thighs. So I just hit the button to release the suction, let them off. I change, get into my hockey gear. Kind of pull open the clamshell, you take off the top cover, slide in, adjust the padding because that's half the battle, and then you clamp down to get on that ice, to, to feel the blades hop over that lip and hit the ice. The sticks just jam right in and you just get skating around. It's, it's a feeling unlike anything else. I don't even know if I could have dreamt that I'd be a gold medalist unless it was the day before the first gold medal game we ever played in. It's really surreal to be sitting in my body right now thinking about, you know, everything we've accomplished. And it is USA winning its fourth consecutive Paralympic gold medal. I mean, there's a lot of emotions that go through your head when you're getting a gold medal. With the adrenaline going and just the pride in your country and to have just gotten done dogpiling your teammates in the crease. There's so many emotions. It's pride, it's joy, it's a lot of great emotions. I've been going to hangar clinics since I was a young kid, whether it's out in New Jersey or when I moved out to college in St. Louis in 2011. Being able to find hangar clinic anywhere that I go and travel to in the U.S. especially has just been really helpful. One of the best parts about hangar is just that they're everywhere, but it's also the individualized attention that I've gotten. With my prosthetics, I have my thigh. They take a mold of me and then they pull some plastic, so a little pliable plastic and then some carbon fiber, and that kind of makes up my socket, so that's the shape of my thigh. And then on the end of that, I have my microprocessor knee. It's a lot to kind of handle sometimes, especially when I'm standing still, but I have never had a stride this smooth. I like to give back, one, because it keeps me involved in the game, it gets me you know, it gives me some inside information. I want to see what kids are coming to take my spot. I want to make sure that this game continues to grow and go, growing in the right direction and in the right way. But I also want to see, you know, disabled people treated with more respect, with more dignity. Just, I think that's really where my, my goal is to just make the world a better place for somebody that's disabled. And, and for, so people know that just because you become disabled, you're born with a disability, doesn't mean your life's over. Well, welcome back here inside the Comerica Center. How about Josh Pauls? I don't know that there's anyone who has meant more to sled hockey and the growth of this sport than the captain 
of the U.S. sled hockey team. Yeah, he's he's a one-of-a-kind player, one-of-a-kind person. Uh, he's been such a tremendous leader to this program, you know, in, in recent years over the last two Paralympic cycles. Uh, but, you know, really just such a good person that gives back to the game every chance he gets. Uh, he wrote a book about his experiences and, you know, just trying to, again, spread the message and, um, you know, really just give back to people and, and how best to, to overcome obstacles and uh, pass on the things that he's learned throughout his life and his hockey career. Nickname? Spuds. Why? Spuds. Uh, he, he got a Mr. Potato Head as a, a gag gift for one of our Christmas parties uh, on the team one year, and he started traveling with it and brought it to every camp, and he puts it up in his locker and uh, faces it towards the opponent's locker room uh, before every game, and it's just kind of stuck. A little voodoo. I like it. Yeah. Uh, we're tied up here through two periods. Uh, we got the third period coming up. I'm so excited to see how this one shapes up. First, though, let's go back down to Mallory. Thanks, Jared. I'm down here with Lyra Doderline. She is one of the four women from the women's national team represented here tonight and on the white team. It is tied up. So what do you think that energy is going to be like going into this third period? You know, we're picking up the pace. We just got to keep moving, keep communicating. Let's go white. I mean, we're getting it. Come on, guys. Like That breakaway was awesome. Let's keep up the energy. Woo! Let's go, Team White! And speaking of that energy, you are a hanger patient. How cool is it to see these two worlds collide? It's amazing. Just not even for the opportunities for the athletes, but just like welcoming all of these clinicians and prosthetists and companies into this space and just letting them see the sport of sled hockey. We couldn't be more excited for you guys to be here. And your clinician is in fact here tonight, right? Yeah. Uh, I think Danielle's somewhere up there. Yeah! Hey! And she is not our only special guest. We also have the Dallas Sled Stars who are here courtesy of Toyota. Let's give that local team some love. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Back to you, Jared. Thanks so much, Mallory, and thanks to Lyra. Lyra doubling as sled hockey player and hype girl for Team White. Yeah, lots of energy. She's young and has a lot of passion for, th for this sport and such a great advocate for hanger and sled hockey. She was really active in that second period, a strong second for Lyra. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that second period. We're all tied up at four. Uh, what you see here in that second? Yeah, like Lyra said, she they White picked it up in that second period. Uh, she had a breakaway there, and uh, the goalie saved it, but her teammate had the rebound, uh, put it in the net for the goal. Brody with a nice goal to take the lead for White. It's really started going back and forth with the goals. We saw lots of goals by both teams. Uh, lots, of, lots of impressive goals. That backhander from Jack Wallace, patient put it up top, and then Noah Grove capping off the period with a snipe over the blocker side just inside the post. Stats through two periods, and, you know, just as you mentioned, after one period, it's, it's pretty even. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I thought these teams were pretty evenly matched going into the game. Uh, they're, they're one and one uh, over the, the weekend in the two scrimmages. We've talked about this being the rubber match, and as we see, it's 4-4. Four, four. Shots on goal are pretty close. Saves are pretty close. Shooting percentage, uh, pretty close. And so we've got 15 minutes here to, to see who's going to take home the title as uh, the, the champion of the first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic. I know I asked the crowd. We got a great crowd here tonight. All right, great crowd. I know we asked you guys before the game who you're rooting for, but you've gotten two periods now getting to watch Team White and Team Blue. So uh, I want to know, uh, make some noise if you think Team Blue is going to come away with this. All right. Well, let's see. Make some noise if you think Team White's going to come away with this. What do you think? I think the fans are, are feeling Team White. I think so. I think they're uh, they're on Team Lyra. Team, team Lyra got them going. Lyra uh, with the, the, the pump up, please, there during the intermission, but really has been a great crowd. And we talked about it during the second period, uh, what hangar means uh, to so many of these athletes and uh, the sport of sled hockey. And it's so great to have that family, that extended family here in one, under one roof tonight. Definitely, and you know, the players can really 
they can feel the excitement and the energy from the, the, the fans and the crowd here. It's not often that, that, that sled hockey players get to play in front of a, a large crowd. You know, typically it's just at the Paralympics or the World Championships that you get that opportunity. So for us to have so many fans here in the house tonight uh, is really exciting for the players. And they love to hear the, the cheers and the claps and the oohs and the ahs when there's big hits and uh, the, the nice goals. And so... Uh, keep the energy and excitement up here in the third period, and uh, the players are definitely going to put on a show here in the last 15 minutes. All right. So we have the third period coming your way. First, though, let's send it down to MT. All right. Presentation from Hangar Clinic's Rebecca Cook. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here on behalf of the foundation. I first met and was introduced to the sport quite a few years ago when Team USA came to teach skills to the Hurricane sled hockey team. From there, I saw the incredible things that they were doing with sled hockey and got to meet players like Olivia, who represent us in incredible ways. I'm here tonight with Olivia Laveri from the Hurricane sled hockey team. She's an incredible athlete and individual who embodies all of the traits that we love to see of a great sports player on the ice. Today I'm here to present Olivia with a grant of $2,000 so we can continue to go home and grow the sport of hurricane sled hockey. What Olivia doesn't know is that we, they will also be providing her with another $1,000 so she can travel to St. Louis for our next tournament in June. <laughs> Olivia and Hurricane Sled believe that hockey is for everybody and it truly changes life. Olivia, we are so honored to have you tonight. Thank you to the foundation and for everyone for being here. Go Canes! All right, 4-4 the score as we creep closer towards the third period alongside Taylor Lips and Jared Sandler. Really excited to be with you tonight along with the third member, uh, the most accomplished member, uh, the best-looking member of our team, Mallory <laughs> Wegeman, down there on the ice, uh, helping to connect the fans with the players and with the sport of sled hockey. I want you to take us, not down to the ice, but into those locker rooms. I'm going to ask you something similar to what I asked you after the first period. we got a 4-4 score. Let's go to... Team White, what's the conversation in their locker room? Yeah, they're, they're just talking about continue doing what they did in that second period. They definitely picked up the pace. Uh, they, they made better passes. They, they forechecked more. They created turnovers in the offensive zone. So they want to they wanna keep doing what they, they were doing in that second period. But Blue's got to get back to what they were doing in that first period. Uh, again, kind of the same thing. They need to get back to forechecking, establishing that physical presence in the offensive zone, creating those turnovers, and really shooting the puck. Now, we're talking about it through the lens of Team Blue versus Team White, but the reality is when uh, these men and women represent the country, they're doing it together against other countries. Uh, the U.S.-Canada rivalry is so special. Uh, and it's one that, thankfully, the United States has dominated uh, here, especially of late. But what can you tell us about that rivalry when the United States and, the, and Canada face off on the ice? Yeah, it's one that runs extremely deep. And there's a, uh, you know, there's a, a true hatred there uh, when, when we get on the ice against each other. Um, and it's extremely competitive. It's extremely physical. And it's usually uh, really exciting games, and we've, we've played them a lot over the years. Um, for a number of years, it was a kind of a toss-up who was, who was going to win those games. But like you mentioned here recently, the, the U.S. has been pretty dominant against, uh, against Canada, and it's been a lot of fun to, to watch. We had the chance to chat with several of the players yesterday, and one of the things we asked was... What is that relationship like? I, I ask you, you know, I mean, you've been a part of that, but I was curious, is it one of just disdain on the ice, but hey, we're wrapping our arms around one another off the ice because we have so much respect for what the men and women in the other sweaters do, or is it just straight up dislike? And 
you know, I, I don't know that the, 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 the athletes we were talking to were necessarily jumping at the chance to answer that. Finally, Brody Roybal kind of stepped up and was like, oh, I mean, I guess it's gotten better, but we really don't like one another. And I, I thought it was a pretty funny but very honest response. Yeah, I, I would go with that. You know, it, it may be getting better, but, yeah, they don't, they don't hang out off the ice for sure, uh, which you do see that with some other countries. Um, you know, you'll see... Um, you know, players from other teams hang out together in the Paralympic Village, uh, you know, in, the, in the, the game center where athletes hang out and play pool or ping pong or, you know, what, what you have it. Uh, but, yeah, U.S. and Canada players don't typically uh, cross paths or spend a lot of time off the ice together. You know, one of the other really interesting nuggets that came from our conversations, and, and I got to share this because uh, Jen Lee is not – going to play here in the third period. There are three goalies for each team, so uh, each goalie is getting their own period. And we mentioned that, you know, we asked some of the athletes, hey, tell us something about you. Give, it, give us something fun. Give us a tidbit. Jen Lee's, I don't think, ever met a conversation that he doesn't like, a microphone that he doesn't like. And I think he was the first one to step up and say, well, I mean, I, I like discounts. I let me tell you something, Taylor. I've asked that question to probably more than a 1,000 athletes across several sports, men, women, different ages. I rarely at this point hear someone share something in terms of something they like that is just totally unique. I've never heard anyone say, I like discounts, and he started listing off military discounts, student discounts. Hey, we get gift bags. I take two or three of them. I mean, what a personality, what a character, what an answer. I like discounts. Yep. If, if you want something unique, uh, ask Jin Lee. He will give you something unique. You can see him there at the top of your screen trying to get the crowd fired up. Third period underway. Team blue, team white. We are tied at four. Who is going to come out on top? And we'll see who can strike first. And team white with an early chance. That was a nice move. Uh, by Team White's Brody Roybal, but he couldn't quite hold possession. Yeah, they did a good job of breaking out of their zone and, zone and coming up the ice. Looked like they probably had maybe a set play in mind, uh, but just got broken up at the blue line. There's Easley and Masevich colliding. Puck squirts free. There's Dotson. He has a goal tonight. Eight goals, eight different goal scorers. Declan Farmer has one of those goals. He was putting pressure on Brody Roybal. Masevich flips it up the ice. And here's Jack Wallace. Pass up to Farmer. Gives it to McKee. McKee, Dotson squirts past for the goal. He gets it by Kyle Huckabee. Huckabee got a little bit on it, but not enough. And we have our first player with multiple goals. Great teamwork there leading to Travis Dotson giving Team Blue the lead back. Kevin McKee and Travis Dotson played on the Chicago Blackhawks together for a really long time. And you could see Kevin take the hit there. He knew he was going to get hit, but he just held the puck for a second longer to draw the defender over. Then he slid it over to a wide open Dotson who slid it on the ice underneath Kyle Huckabee. Huckabee in net for Team White, and in net for Team Blue, Chris McCoy. And that one covered up. So Dodson with a couple of goals tonight. Dotson is another one of those dual sport athletes. He was actually a Paralympian in Nordic skiing and biathlon uh, before he even started playing sled hockey. Went to the 2014 Paralympic Games in Sochi, Russia as a uh, biathlon athlete and then switched over to sled hockey and went to Pyeongchang in Beijing as a sled hockey athlete and won a couple of gold medals. Malloy collides with Douglas, but the puck in the zone for Blue. Here's Brett Bolton, the 16-year-old. Just learned how to drive, now trying to drive one of the net, but uh, ends up getting angled to the corner, and White able to regain possession. And now Blue gets it back into the zone, a switch for Team Blue. There's Eustace. 
Curling his way away from trouble to Nichols. Escobedo. Across center ice. A pass over to Shapersky. So Blue, you can see us trying to establish that four check that they had in that first period. Here's to Claudio. To Eustace, shot saved. Nice job by Huckabee. Unable to cover it up, so the puck ended up behind the net. But here's Team White trying to get their footing here. And now the puck sent down uh, towards the red line, but no icing. Uh, icing, a rule that hockey fans obviously know about, but for someone watching the game for the first time, uh, how would you explain icing? Yeah, the puck can't cross the center ice line and go all the way down past the goal line, which is the red line that crosses all the way across the end of the rink that crosses in front of the goal there uh, without a player touching it. So that's, that's called icing. It prevents teams from just throwing the puck down the ice constantly. Uh, keeps the pace of play going. And a bumper back in play off the bench. And hey, what do you know? Right on cue, we've got an icing. 11-15 to play here in the third period. Team Blue leading Team White. You said Team Blue would win 5-4. to four. I don't know if we can hold off for 11-15, though, on another goal. Not the pace that we've we've seen them playing here in the second period and the to start the, the third here, but I'm not right very often, but <laughs> if I call if I call this one, I might uh, make someone pay up. Here's Jones. And easily his pass attempt is blocked. Roybel's got it trying to lead an odd man break, but how about Travis Dotson able to Get to the puck. Not really able to clear it, but there's a big hit. We've seen Dotson do it all. Yeah, a lot of players on the, the Paralympic team will say Travis Dotson is probably the fastest player on the team, especially in a straight line without the puck. Just pure speed. Um, and here he is again. Farmer to Dotson. Drops it off to Wallace, but just out of his reach. Jones trying to make a play on it, but here comes Team White. A two-on-one, Pauls gets by easily. Pauls to tie it up. Oh, what a save. How about Chris McCoy keeping the lead in favor of the blue? What a save by Chris McCoy there on Josh Pauls. There's not many goaltenders in the world that can make that save on Josh Pauls or that have made that save on Josh Pauls in that type of situation. Chris McCoy, who is a teammate of Josh Paul's back in St. Louis. At Lindenwood. Yep. Pulls one out of his bag of tricks and stuff, stuffs Josh Paul's in front of uh, his hangar crowd here. Well, we talk about camaraderie. That's not nice to do to a teammate, and he played club with him as well. These two are linked. Yep. McCoy will definitely hold that one over Spuds' head uh, in the locker room back home. He must not have had Mr. Potato Head facing Chris McCoy before the game. <laughs> Here's Eustace. Uh, contact. Nice job by Woodkey. There's a shot. McCoy a save, and he gloves it. And we got a stoppage with 914. Taylor, you know, we're watching these men and women skate around, and obviously... You know, the sled and, and the blade plays a big role, but from a physical standpoint, a body standpoint, what goes into skating and maneuvering your way up and down the ice? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really dynamic sport, especially compared to other adaptive sports in that you're using both hands all the time, right? You're using both hands to skate. You're using both hands to stick handle, to shoot, to pass, all while someone's trying to take your head off, right, by checking you. And so it's, it's just so dynamic, uh, and then on top of that, you, you're having to use your core to balance out there in your sled. Uh, we saw at the beginning of the game Declan showing us the equipment and the blades on the sled are really close together. It's really tippy back and forth. Uh, so you're using your core muscles to stay balanced, 
both hands at all times. And, you know, for, for people that have seen hockey, uh, stand-up hockey, the, the NHL player sticks, they, they flex. So they basically bend and allow the, the players to kind of use technology to, to whip the puck uh, towards the net. But our, our sticks in sled hockey don't have that type of um, length to them to flex. And so the, the power that you see uh, the players generate when they shoot the puck is just pure strength from their, their shoulders. And um, it's, it's truly incredible. In these athletes, you see them, the you know, broad shoulders and the upper body strength that's required to have success in this sport. It, it's very visible when, you're, uh, when you're, you're meeting them and talking to them and seeing them not from the stands while they're on the ice and pads, but just up close and personal. Yep, the, these these players put in so much work to be in the the best physical shape they can be in. Um, you know, th they really do something every single day to make themselves better athletes, and that's why they've been so successful. Five four, Team Blue leading Team White. Seven and a half to play. We're midway through the third period. Puck sent down and racing after it. Team Blue. That was. Jones, who has a goal tonight, putting some pressure on Pauls. Now Menza. Farmer beats him to it. High slot. Farmer. Pass. Wallace saved once. Saved twice. Sprawling. Kyle Huckabee keeps us a one-goal game. What an incredible series of saves there by Kyle Huckabee, who's a native Texan and resident of Houston, plays for the Houston Hellbounds. Saucer pass from Declan Farmer to Wallace, tape to tape, and Huckabee gets over and makes two incredible saves on Jack Wallace. Maybe the best saves of the night. Now, we did get a penalty T-boning, so... Uh, we are going to have a penalty shot for Team Blue. And so uh, Huckabee is going to be put to the test right away. It's, uh, we have Brody Roybal uh, skating towards the bench. Oh, no, what, what do we have here? It looks like uh, perhaps a little bit of a... Looks like it's a penalty on, on Blue. So yeah. White's going to get to take a shot and a chance to ruin my score prediction and tie the game up. All right, so Team White with a great opportunity to even things up. Chris McCoy put to the test. So here is Brody Roybal. Off to the races. Roybal. McCoy, the shot, and it is in there! It looked like McCoy had it initially, but it got by him. Brody Roybal ties it up at five with his second goal of the night. I think Brody got this in with pure will. McCoy got a piece of it. It looked like he got enough of it to keep it out, but somehow it, it got past McCoy. I don't know if another player got a piece of it on the rebound or if it just bounced over McCoy after making the initial save, but we've got a tie game with right at seven minutes left. In a tie, we will have a five player penalty shot shootout followed by sudden death if still tied up after those five. Wallace trying to break the tie, saved by Huckabee. Put that one right in his chest. I'm not sure Wallace could buy a goal from Huckabee right now. Huckabee's got his number. Kyle Huckabee, you mentioned local product, he played his first. Sled hockey game on ice of the 2012 USA Hockey Disabled Festival right here in the DFW Metroplex. Yep, he's been a member of the Houston program for a number of years. He's He played on the Dallas Stars sled program uh, for a couple of years when he attended the University of Texas at Arlington. Um, and he's been a member of this U.S. development team for a number of years. Turnover. Shot saved by McCoy. That was a great look for Brandon Adam. But a better save by Chris McCoy. Brandon Adams, another product of Denver, Colorado. That Colorado Avalanche sled team has a number of representatives here. 
on both the men's Paralympic team and the development team. You see here, old friends and teammates Kevin McKee and Brody Roybal really fighting each other for the puck. Kevin McKee comes out on top. Now off the boards, here comes Team Blue. That was uh, youngster Brett Bolton able to lead the charge just to get the puck out of their zone. Adam. He flips it up ahead. Roybal cut off by Bolton, but Roybal able to come away with the puck as Bolton lost it. He dumps it towards the net, but right at McCoy who covers it up and uh, we got a stoppage with 5.25 to go here in the third period. We are tied at five. Uh, this game, the competitiveness, it has not disappointed. Brody Roybal with a couple of goals. He scored early. He just scored in a shootout to tie things up at five. And right now, he joins Mallory. All right. We are down here now with Brody Roybal on the ice. Brody, you just scored the goal that brought this game to a tie. What is it going to take for this white team to pull ahead and win here in the next five minutes? Um, we're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little hand into the net, but um, we're just going to keep playing our game. I think we've been playing a great team game so far. And uh, we have five minutes, so we're going to do it right here. All right, well, we're ready to watch the rest of this game. Best of luck out there, and back to you, Jared. Thanks, Mallory, and thanks to Brody. Uh, it was great chatting with Brody. You know, one, one interesting thing about Brody, he, he's not this huge hockey fan. You know, I, I saw you checking the scores in between periods. Declan Farmer was giving us the breakdown. He's a big Tampa Bay Lightning fan. Uh, but Brody said, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't really watch a lot of hockey, but he sure is that good at hockey. And the things he can do on the ice are really impressive. Yeah, that is one of the unique things about Brody. Um, yeah, and he, he's definitely honest about it. He'll, he, <laughs> he will tell you he does not watch hockey. He's not a fan of hockey. He's not a fan of any sport, really. Uh, he's, he's a gamer. Um, but, yeah, you're not lying when you say he's an incredible hockey player. Um, as you've mentioned a couple of times, one of the top two leading scorers in U.S. sled hockey history and one of the best players in the world. You know, we're here in DFW uh, right next to the Stars practice facility. The Stars having one of the best seasons in the NHL. Jason Robertson having one of the best seasons for individuals in the NHL. You think if Jason Robertson rocked by Brody Roybal, he'd know who he was? Not a chance. I don't think so either. They, they tested Brody the other night and asked him if he could name 10 NHL players, and it took him six minutes to rattle off 10 players. Oy. Oh, there's a loose puck. Off the bar, but then the rebound put back and scored. Team White with the lead. 4.21 to go. Let's see who finished that one on the rebound. Was that Brandon Adam? I think it was. Yeah, I, I think it might have been Cromier again with the rebound. He followed up Lyra earlier on the rebound for the goal and then Evan Nichols tried to shoot it under his sled and hit the post and there was Brendan Cromier again for the rebound in the wide open net. You're right, wearing the number 13 on the back of his sweater. Whoa. So Team White leading 6-5, 4.08 to go. I think we had 17 officials on that offside there. The white bench, they all had their hand up calling that offsides <laughs> on Declan Farmer. A lot of trash talk on the ice between these two teams. Oh yeah, again, it doesn't matter that you know these, these players are teammates uh, on the national team or friends. When they're playing against each other, it is cutthroat out there and they are out there to win. Wallace. Nice defense there by Wikowski. Farmer with Masevich tight to him. Easily. Pressure from the point. Jones comes up with it. He's got a lane from the slot. Jones on net. He scores! What a whip of a shot! Malik Jones, his second of the night, and we're tied at six. What a beautiful shot by Malik Jones. You see, you see him just curl to the middle. He's patient, fakes a shot, and then he just waits until Huckabee drops his hands and then rifles it right over his blocker side. Top shelf. Just such a, 
A great shot from a young player. Three, 25 and counting. We're tied at six. So now we've got three players who have multiple goals. Royville, Cormier, and there's Malik Jones. Around the net, Grove tries to center it, has it knocked away. And the puck cleared out of the zone. Unique fact about Malik Jones and the local Dallas Sled Stars program, the, the coach of the Dallas Sled Stars, Kara, used to coach in Colorado and actually coached Malik Jones when he was a youngster and helped coach him as he was growing up. One of his biggest fans and so excited to see him make the U.S. team last year and win his first gold medals. And Musselman had it, but then good job coming back and taking it away. I think that was Woodkey. But then Musselman's got it. High slot shot. Glove save by McCoy. He was a little bit sassy with that glove save there. He tried to go high on him, but McCoy said, no, no, no. That's a, that's a Steve Cash-esque type sassy glove save. Steve Cash also a St. Louis native. So Chris McCoy uh, took a lot of notes from Steve Cash. McCoy actually used to play as a, as a skater for St. Louis. Um, just recently in the last couple of years switched to goaltender, so he's made uh, a huge amount of progress in the net over the last couple of years and already made the development team, obviously. Taylor, I said we got a shootout if this game's tied after regulation. I just saw Griffin Lamar and uh, Jen Lee go back to the locker room to get re-suited up. It looks like they would be the ones uh, to go between the pipes if that was the case. Escobedo shot blocked by Eustace, loose puck. It's in the slot to Claudio, was sideways deflected into then out of the zone. Farmer picks it up, but Team Blue has to reset. Declan Farmer scored the first goal of the night. Couple assists as well, he carries it in the zone. Gives it up, Escobedo shot, saved by Huckabee. Ooh, Declan Farmer might have wanted that one back from Escobedo. They had a three on one. But it's tough as a player where you, when you're in the slot with the puck at the hash marks not to just take that shot. I mean, Evan Nickel, I mean, David Eustace was given Escobedo all the time in the world. So as a, as a player, you've got to take that shot. Just couldn't sneak it past Huckabee. So Farmer will take the draw against Mishevich. Misevich, I think, won the draw, but Blue controlled the puck. Jones. Inside of a minute. Near the half wall now, pushed out to the point. Wallace flipped it sideways. No one was there, and here comes Wikowski. Nick Wikowski cut off by Easley. And then Easley loses it. Misevich. He's got one man to beat, it's the goalie, the shot, and it is saved. The rebound is loose. Who's got it? It's still loose and now covered up. What a job by Chris McCoy. He has made some big saves here of late. Unbelievable. And a really bad turnover by Blue in the, in the offensive zone and Mishevitz. Really had all day, tried to go left to right, and McCoy stretched out and stood strong on his goal line, covered it up with the glove, had it, all his players back trying to help him cover that puck to get a whistle. All right, we got 18 seconds. Can Team White come up with a goal? Roybal trying to keep it away from Farmer. He's able to. Puck along the boards, now into the zone. Musselman and Jones. Jones slips, 
Puck is loose. Dotson's got it, and that is going to do it. So three periods in the books, and we're not done. We are tied at six. And, hey, I know you look at the score, you say 6-6, six, six, and, man, a lot of offense, but you got to credit the two goalies in that third, Kyle Huckabee and Chris McCoy, Taylor, because if it weren't for those two, uh, who knows what the score would be. They came up with some big-time saves. They both had some huge saves. We saw uh, Kyle Huckabee make three incredible saves on Jack Wallace, and then we just saw Chris McCoy make a goal line stand on Josh Mrzhevitz there at the very end of the game with 30 seconds left on a breakaway. Both goaltenders played huge there in the third period to keep this game level at six, and now we've got a five-person shootout. So it looks like maybe Griffin Lamar and Jin Lee come back on the ice to man the, the crease for the shootout, and we'll get each team's best of the best. Yeah, those two had to go back to the dressing room and change it. You know, I, I feel like mentally they thought their night was done. It's not. So a five-player shootout, and what a game here. The first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic. Uh, you know, no matter the score, it was going to be you know, an awesome demonstration showing off what these athletes were able to do and, and introducing the game of sled hockey, I'm sure, to a lot of people here in the building. Uh, but we're not just getting any game. We are getting an absolute thriller that really came down to the final seconds with some great chances for Team White as the two goalies have gone uh, have gone to their respective sides. All right, uh, I think I've got the list of the shooters. So for Team Blue, we've got Travis Dotson, Malik Jones, Declan Farmer, Jack Wallace, and Kevin McKee in that order. For Team White, we've got Josh Mishevich, who's going to lead it off, Brody Roybal, Noah Grove, Josh Pauls, and then rounding it out for Team White, Ben Musselman. And then after each five, if we're still tied, then it'll go to sudden death, and we'll have to kind of figure it out. Yep, we couldn't have asked for a better game here tonight. We saw fast pace. We saw big hits. We saw high-end skill, stick handling, shots, and now a shootout. Here's Dotson against Lee. Shot scores. So Travis Dodson starts the shootout off for Team Blue. And they put the pressure on Team White. Did you like going first or second in a shootout? I always like going first. You know, you, you have to have that confidence as a shooter, um, but you really get to set the tone uh, for the shootout and put the pressure on, on the other team. The Savage. Working against Lamar, and Lamar stymies him. Josh Misevich with the opportunity, tried to go right to left, but was unable to complete the move. Yeah, sometimes when you try to go right to left too many times, you just bumble the puck a little bit and, and lose it. Uh, we saw Travis Dotson do the exact same thing to perfection. Uh, unfortunately, Misevich couldn't pull it off on the opposite end here, and now we'll see what Malik Jones chooses to do. We saw him score one goal by going right to left, and then we saw him score his second goal just by rifling the puck from the slot. So let's see what he does here. Charging it with speed. Puck on the right. Back to the left, and a sprawling save by Jen Lee. Jen Lee with a little gamesmanship there and a salute to the, to the sky. Team Blue with a 1-0 lead here in the shootout. Roybal, the second shooter for Team White. Couple of goals tonight in regulation. Coming in with pace from the left. Puck on the right. He works it around Lamar and scores. Crafty there from Brody Roybal. And you're laughing. You're smiling. Some kisses to the crowd from Brody Roybal. You, you saw him just be extremely patient with the puck. He, he really just waited for, for Lamar to commit to, to one direction or the other. As soon as Lamar uh, dropped down, he, he switched to his, his right hand and went right around him. All-time leading scorer, Declan Farmer, charging in, stops, back to the left, top shelf scores! How about that? Now Declan Farmer with some kisses and waves to the crowd to show up Brody Roybal. 
And you see Declan just left-handed, top shelf. I think he hit three posts on that shot. And that's what makes Declan so impressive is that he can shoot uh, equally as hard and precise with both hands, left and right. Grove, he gets by Lamar. Going to the right. And we are tied back up. Two goals aside, three shooters in for each team. And now, <laughs> this back and forth continues after that Noah Grove goal. It's Jack Wallace who is up for Team Blue. Nice patience there by Noah and then slides it in on his backhand. I, I think Jack's just going to bring it in here and then rip it. Puck on the left. Now to the right. Back to the left, to the right, back to the left, and his shot is wide. He went between the sled there. A uh, little fancy maneuvering, but he just couldn't quite put it on net. Yep, again, that's the most, you know, used move in sled hockey is just trying to go left to right to, to throw the goaltender off. Here's Pauls to give White the lead. Josh Pauls, shot scores! And he does a little bit of a, I don't know, what do we call this celebration here? <laughs> I don't know what the name is for that. And uh, I guess that's it. Josh Pauls gives them the win. So Team White comes away victorious in the first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic. Captain America. Team Hanger captain Josh Pauls wins it for Team White. Such a fun night, such a fun event. Athletes really put on a show. Yeah, it was really special. Now you hear uh, the roar of the crowd and uh, the, the handshakes as these two teams, teammates really, uh, congratulating one another, dapping each other up and uh, you know, what a great demonstration of what this sport is all about as we take a look at some of the replays from the third period and uh, the shootout. And what an action-packed third period as well. It could have been a dull, passive third period. It wasn't at all. Yeah, it started out a little bit slow. Uh, you know, neither team wanted to make a mistake, and then we really saw them kind of let loose, and uh, we saw some back-and-forth action, some great saves by both goaltenders couple of key goals but ultimately it ended in a tie and went to a shootout we see both teams here on the ice saluting the fans giving their thanks and their respect for coming out and supporting the teams a great crowd great game team white in the shootout coming up with the victory and right now uh, we toss it down to Mallory Wegeman. Here on the ice with Vinnit Osser, chairman and CEO of Hangar. What a game. This has been such a remarkable experience that you all have put on here for Hangar Live. And the guys and women on this ice surely did not disappoint. Oh, this is, listen, you've got a whole new bunch of fans for sled hockey and Team USA right here in front of you. So thank you to Team USA. Thank you to the coaches, the players, the staff. And we're just thankful that we can be a large part of the potential these incredible athletes have. So let's give it one more hand for this Team USA. And thank you, Bennett. And players, let's get it one more time for these fans. Am I right? Thank you, everyone. And a big thank you to the players. Back to you, Jared. Thanks so much, Mallory. What an exciting night. What an exciting game. Uh, Taylor, I know we just talked about it, but final thoughts. You said, hey, hold on. I, I want you to turn to these players. You said Team Blue was going to win, but Team White came out on top. Team White, what do you have to say to Taylor? That's all right. I, I, I'm okay with being wrong every once in a while. My wife reminds me frequently, but 
Uh, I'll still put my money on Declan Farmer every day. Uh, what are some of your big takeaways from tonight's game? Really just how skilled these players are. You know, we saw the speed on display tonight. We saw the physicality of this sport. Uh, we saw the women holding their own out here, uh, which was really awesome to see. And we saw the best sled hockey players in the world uh, putting on a great game that came down to a shootout. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to watch. What's next now? Uh, you know, for, for people who are interested in following the sport of sled hockey and, and these men and women out on the ice, what's next? Yeah, for the, the national teams, you can follow along at, you know, USA Hockey's uh, website and social media channels across all the different social media platforms. But if you're interested in trying out sled hockey, I would, uh, you know, recommend Googling and searching for a program in your area. Uh, if there's not a program in your area, you can reach out to USA Hockey to, to find out about how to start a program in your area if you're interested in trying to start a program. Uh, but there's, there's definitely lots of opportunities out there for people to get involved in the sport and follow along. One last time, a big round of applause to everyone. The first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic right here inside the Comerica Center in Frisco, Texas. What an amazing event. It was so exciting watching that third period. Uh, and T. White in the shootout ends up getting the victory. Brody Royble had a couple of goals in regulation, a big one uh, there in the shootout to help lead. Team White and their captain Josh Paul is coming up with the clincher, which very fittingly bookends the goal scoring for Team White here tonight. A great event here in Frisco. Again, the first ever Hangar Live Sled Hockey Classic. Team White comes out on top. I want to congratulate all the players from both teams. A hard fought game. That's it for us. For our entire production team, for Taylor Lipset, Mallory Wegeman, I'm Jared Sandler saying so long. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.